Hello everyone, this video is in our Chess 960 series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're going to do um, a little series of videos on stockfish games, starting with this one, Stockfish Against Ethereal from the TCC Season 21 Fisher Random Tournament. Ethereal is a very strong uh, Chess 960 engine. Um, it has a special net for playing Chess 960, different to its normal net. and. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's really a very impressive uh, engine. It was only knocked out of the semi-finals on tiebreak by, uh, by Leela. So, um, yeah, really very strong. But this was a, a wonderful game from, uh, from Stockfish, uh, showing that uh, even in Chess 960, king safety is very important. Um, let's start off with this uh, initial position. Um, in, in some way, sort of the you know the white pieces feel sort of uh, spread a bit randomly here uh, um, across the board. Um, sometimes you know you get uh, situations where the pieces seem to be grouped nicely, and uh, you know you can uh, um, uh, you can you know make up a plan based on that. But here, it's just a little bit random with the uh, the rook in between two knights, the bishops sort of a, a little bit centrally placed, and then the queen and rook on the side. But you can get some ideas here. I mean. The uh, uh, the knights are going to end up fairly central. You know, this knight um, can go to b3, supporting d4. This knight's on d3, covering, uh, you know, uh, d c5 and e5 and f4. So, um, and with the bishops on e1 and f1, it does actually make quite a bit of sense to play some sort of central strategy with d4, e4, open up the diagonals of both bishops, and then support the uh, the centre with the knights. That makes quite a lot of sense, castling queenside after. Um, you could also look at playing uh, e4 and f4, uh, because e4 and f4 not only opens up diagonals for both the bishops, it also activates the queen along the g1a7 diagonal. Um, so a move like e4 followed by f4, or maybe even f4 first, could be quite interesting. Um, another slightly um, uh, different idea would be to play um, something like g4 followed by h4. I always like these, uh, you know, just pushing the pawns in front of a, a grouping of, uh, of major pieces. You know, it's, uh, the engines seem to do this a lot and uh, I quite like this. So, yeah, I mean, uh, g4 and h4 seems quite nice. In actual fact, all of my engines, uh, so, well, uh, Stockfish in this game, and then also Stockfish and Revenge on um, on my uh, 94 thread machine, they all wanted to play e4, which is a pretty, you know, decent move. Um, then it surprised me slightly, uh, Knight a b6 was also a common, uh, a common move. I mean, in general, I don't like moving the knights um, straight away in, uh, in Chess 960 Fisher Random. I think um, you're never quite sure how the pawn structure is going to work out. And, um, you know, I always think that it's nice just to wait just um, maybe a couple of moves and just decide where that knight wants to go. I guess on a8 it's, you know, b6 is quite a common move, so might be something that you uh, would expect you're going to do um, anyway. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, e5, uh, uh, knight a b3, again, slightly early for, for my taste. f6 was um, uh, was one idea that uh, the stockfish played as black, and that's also quite, uh, quite reasonable. Um, but okay, e4, knight a b6, knight a b3 from white, um, and now the move f6. Yeah, f6, very, well, always feels like a dodgy move in uh, in standard chess, especially when white's gone e4. But in uh, Fisher Random Chess, of course, anything goes really. And here, um, uh, f6 is uh, activating the queen and also activating the bishop as well. And uh, keeping a lot of flexibility in the central pawn structure. I mean, you could even think of playing d5. Or you could just play, uh, it could just support e5 as well. You know, both are, uh, are possible there. Uh, d4 from white. So white's just going for this central plan. Very uh, natural. The bishop's uh, now active and uh, we'll play f3 uh, later. We'll support the pawn on e4 and open up the, the queen's support for d4. So, you know, very logical as well. And now an interesting move. Um, um, Ethereal played this move d5 just striking back at the uh, um, at the white center. It feels risky to me, I guess because of the the e6 square somehow. You know, I get nervous about playing the moves d5 and f6 together. But um, uh, yeah, it's probably, probably quite decent uh, in actual fact. Uh, Revenge did something uh, crazy here in uh, one of our games. It played uh, g5 and after f3 played g4. 
quite uh, quite an amazing little idea but somehow after f4 it ended up looking pretty pretty nice for white really i wasn't really sure what this maneuver g5 to g4 had achieved um d5 was played and now e takes d5 which i i do prefer i mean um uh in some games that uh, revenge played against stockfish on uh, on my hardware white played e5 but then after e6 this looked like some sort of um uh, strange French or um, or one e four knight c six opening, um, and actually this this turned out to be very very nice for uh, for black um, knight d three knight e seven castles h five, uh, just you know grabbing plenty of um, of uh, of light squares there, knight b c five castles, f four bishop g six, <coughs> pardon me and. Uh, Pieces are great. Pieces are looking really nice, and uh, actually, you know, Stockfish um, in this position ended up beating Revenge as Black. Simply, you know, it was just um, just a nice position, and uh, and Stockfish just outplayed Revenge. So um, e5 is not a good move, but e takes d5 does feel more natural, to be to be honest. Um, I mean, this is where the, the real weakness of Black's position is. So you really do want the uh, the open e file. And of course, if you get rid of that d5 pawn, you can also look at ideas like playing c4 and d5 later. So um, um, yeah, you know, I mean, it just feels like a like a much better move there. Um, knight d6 was played, not taking the pawn immediately. Knight d3, and then knight takes d5. Um, yeah, I mean, castles was also played in uh, in some of my uh, some of my games between uh, Stockfish and Revenge, um, and um, uh, it was mainly Revenge that was playing this as Black. Got decent positions, even though it lost uh, um, a lot of games. For example, castles, uh, Queen takes d5, which doesn't look uh, too bad to, to be honest. I mean, I quite like these knights on d6 and b6 aiming for the c4 square, and uh, well, might as well get the queen active. Um, Bishop e2, um, king b8, h4, h5, king b1, bishop f7. This looked pretty reasonable for um, for black to me. You know, it's just um, uh, I thought black was uh, was should, should be doing quite okay here. Um, Ethereal played uh, knight takes d5, castle queen side, and now um, the move b6. Um, and again, this feels you know very very risky somehow. Um, we're playing b6 to cover knight c5, but obviously all these light squares feel very, very, uh, very, very holy indeed. Um, but, you know, this is, uh, again, apparently still perfectly all right for, uh, for black. It's, uh, but I think, you know, the, the important thing is to, to realize these weaknesses and not forget that at some stage you're going to have to, uh, to, uh, to cover them and also find a safe spot for your king. So h4 was played by um, uh, by Stockfish, and we, we're quite used to these sort of moves nowadays. Um, it's just like an exploratory um, uh, uh, attack on the king side, just uh, asking Black, well, what are you going to do? I mean, if you allow the uh, the white pawn to uh, to come to h5 eventually, that'll stop Black from playing the bishop to g6. But if you play h5, um, you know, there's maybe some extra weaknesses on g6, for example. And we've also given the rook on h3 some um, some space to uh, to enter the game. And of course, with the third rank clear like that, um, you know, rook h3 is more, probably more valuable than rook h6 from black. So I guess it's kind of a of a little uh, advantage for, um, for, for white in that sense. We're also giving the queen maybe a, a little exit square on h2 even, who knows. So... Um, um, here, Ethereal played um, a5. Um, yeah, just uh, chasing this pawn on a4 feels very risky to me. Again, uh, my engines were quite happy with it. Um, I find it, uh, you know, slightly, uh, slightly tricky. I mean, I, I guess that um, you know, playing the pawn to a5, you're um, you're stopping White from um, uh, from clamping down on the queen side later if you castle queen side. That's where the king's going to go. You know, um, uh, you're getting a bit of extra space for the king there. But you know, considering there's also a bishop on e1, looking at the a5 square, you know, get a bit worried about putting my, my pieces within range there. But um, yeah, again, uh, you know, these were moves that were being played by, for example, Stockfish as black. So uh, presumably feel they can get away with it. But I, I just want to get the uh, idea across that, you know, the risk, I think, is increasing uh, um, with every move with uh, with black, you know, because you're playing some quite uh, some quite exotic ideas there. King b1 from uh, from white h5 now stopping the uh, the h pawn from advancing, and now we've got to think of a of a plan for uh, for white. Um, yeah, 
G3 was played, which is quite a, um, an interesting idea. I mean, I think we um, what White is looking for here is to go bishop h3 and uh, target the c6 square. You know, it's uh, it might be less weak in chess 960 than in standard chess, but, well, it's still a weak square and still worth uh, targeting there. Um, so, yeah, here this is maybe where um, uh, Ethereal started to go a little bit off, I think. Um, I think just, you know, going too far with the risk, basically. Um, Stockfish was playing, uh, played a lot of games, actually, with this move E6. Bishop H3 and then G5. Slightly outrageous little move there. Takes, takes. A3, Knight C4, Knight E5. The move A4. Very interesting. Just, uh, just aiming to sacrifice a pawn, actually, just to double up the white pawns there. Knight c1 played by um, uh, Revenge and then Tuk Tuk and Castle Queenside. And um, yeah, this worked out quite beautifully actually. Bishop d2, Bishop c6, Bishop g2, King b8, Queen e1, h4. You know, and uh, somehow, as if by a miracle, um, all black's pieces made sense. But I think e6 was a, a very sensible move. You know, just, um, uh, you know, we can hold our, uh, our light squares like this, get the king to safety. You know, it looked quite... Uh, like quite a good time to uh, to consolidate there. Um, what um, Ethereal did, and actually um, uh, Revenge also wanted to do this move. Play the move bishop d7. Uh, Stockfish plays uh, f3 here. Um, actually keeping the option of bishop h3 open and also allowing the rook to uh, to come to h2 over to e2 or to uh, or somewhere else basically to uh, um, yeah just to join in the attack basically. And now this move really looked risky. Bishop f5 from uh, from black. Again, you wonder slightly, yeah, you know, why are you why are you doing this really? What's uh, the value of having the bishop on f5? I mean, it gets hit by g4, and um, well, we're still waiting on development. Um, so Stockfish played rook h2, a4, and uh, this is where it really starts um, because here um, uh, Stockfish met uh, a4 by knight bc5 in we go so it comes as no surprise that um b takes c5 d takes c5 is quite risky for um uh for black um this bishop on e1 funnily enough is uh, is really neutralizing uh, the black b file pressure by covering c3 so there's no knight c3 check or anything like this we just uh, take it of course um, and of course, we've got, um, we sacrificed a piece, but we've got this open d file and the king behind it. And we've got, you know, ideas like knight b4 or knight f4. So uh, e5 was uh, played quite a lot in my uh, in my engine games. But after king a1, queen f7, c4, black was in quite a bit of trouble here. Because the knight moves away, we just get uh, c5 simply. So, uh, yeah, this was quite, uh, quite unpleasant. So you can't take this knight. So now you're sort of going to be, um, uh, you know, sort of fighting... Uh, fighting wide but I mean you're doing it with your king in the center and uh, we've played moves like a5 to a4 so this king is not going to get safe very easily and you know bishop and queen here don't find it that easy to develop so your king's really going to be stuck in the center and uh, yeah I don't know I mean it just felt super risky for uh, for black it just felt like not the thing he wanted to do at all but Ethereal was uh, was playing on, on tactics as well. So the knight comes to c4. We've got ideas like knight e3. And obviously you're thinking, well, I can take on c5. Make use of the unusual position of the rook on b8. You know, I mean, it um, from that point of view, it's really, you know, a good fish, a random idea. But, um, but yeah, I mean, these pieces, I mean, they're, they're all... None of them have got outposts. None of them are supported by pawns. It's all very, very loose. And, uh, to, you know, to me, it's not at all a surprise that you're... Uh, that you're in big trouble. Um, Stockfish played g4, hitting this bishop. Um, and it's a bit of a tricky one for black. I mean, if you go back to c8, then you're losing an attacking piece. If you go to g6, then um, this e6 square is extremely weak. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, I have some games between Stockfish and Revenge. Bishop g6, actually white playing g takes h5. Uh, so again, now this bishop on f8, Really going to find it hard to develop. Can't even go g6 anymore. Knight e4 uh, played. Knight d e3. Rook c1. Takes, takes. Um, and yeah, 
you know, I mean, Black's got the bishop pair there, but um, again, not much closer to uh, to developing very easily. And uh, somehow it just always seemed to go wrong. E5 takes, castle queenside finally. But you've just lost, you know, lots of pawns, got a pass pawn on, on the H file there. It's just quite difficult for uh, for Black this again. Um, so, you know, it's not so bad, but um, uh, but not that great either. But Ethereal went for B takes C5, taking that piece, which is really, really risky, of course. And um, this is where things started to go really wrong. Uh, G takes F5, the bishop goes, knight C3, and then a, a really great uh, um, rook sacrifice now from uh, from Stockfish takes, knight D1, and then put another piece on priest, knight B4. Why on earth do you think you could uh, get away with um, a rook sacrifice like that? Well, I mean, look at these pieces, which are, you know, completely undeveloped. The king can't escape this way. And, well, over on this side, you don't really feel that uh, the black's are a rook up here. You feel actually that black's are kind of a rook down, you know, in terms of the cover that he's got. And, um, yeah, knight takes b4, bishop b4 played. And now if we go rook b4, we've just got this very powerful move, rook d2. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we've got all sorts of threats here. Um, so um, if we go to e8, for example, um, we just go queen g6 check, queen f7 and rook d8, and we pick up the queen. And uh, black's actually got quite a bit of good material for it. I mean, you've got uh, uh, two rooks and a piece for the queen, but of course this development is uh, is horrific. And the black king's in, uh, in trouble as well. So um, uh, ethereal preferred to castle queenside. We get bishop a6 check, king b8 and c6. And, uh, well, black's a rook up and, uh, you know, black's uh, sort of covering this knight on uh, on d1 as well. But we're just threatening to go to, you know, round to c5 and b5. And, uh, I mean, there's just nothing covering the black king here. So Ethereal played knight c3 check, which looks a bit odd. But the idea is really to uh, um, to try and stop... Uh, <laughs> To try and stop White from um, um, from bringing the Queen to the Queen side by opening up the D1 square. So after Bishop takes C3, you can't go Queen C5 next move because of Rook D1 check. So you're slowing White down. But okay, we'll come to F1. Bishop C5, we go A3, um, and uh, you know we are simply threatening to. Um, uh, we can do something like Queen B5 check. We can go Bishop C4 just to chase away the Queen. I mean, long term, this is just not really happening for black. Um, so queen d5 played, queen b5 check, queen takes a4. Um, we've got lots of pawns now, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. So we've, we're not even material down. Uh, exchange uh, uh, and two pawns for the rook. And we're also threatening bishop b7 here with uh, queen a8 mate coming in. Um, and all of my games here, my ancient games, were, were lost in the end for uh, for black. There's really no hope here. Queen f3, king a2, queen f5, picking up a few pawns. Bishop b4. Um, the idea is to go bishop b7 and meet bishop a7 with bishop c5 just to get rid of that piece. So e4 played. Bishop b7, bishop a7. The idea is that bishop c5 now can be met by queen c5. So black's still holding on. But now a, an absolutely gorgeous move from Stockfish. It's the sort of move that sort of comes up and you think, ah, of course, rook h3 was played. Uh, the idea is that queen h3, we go bishop c5. We've just diverted the queen away from uh, the fifth rank. So there's no uh, defense to uh, to this mate. And the, um, um, I mean, we can give a check, but uh, then we just go b3 and it's uh, curtains again. And the big point, of course, is that when we go rook h3, the rook's coming over to b3, which is going to cause some uh, some more upset. So rook d1, rook b3, queen f1. Amazingly, we're uh, threatening mate here with black. Rook c3. Um, what does this maneuver rook b3, rook c3 accomplished? Well, it's diverted the queen away from the fifth rank. And now the rook actually, with tempo, is uh, supporting bishop c5. So, I mean, if, even if the queen comes back, we can just go bishop c5. And, you know, we're just uh, winning again. So rook a1 check, king b3, queen b1, queen a6, just giving the king a little escape square on a4, and we're still threatening bishop c5 again. Rook a2, threatening queen b2, quite thrilling this. I mean, if I was playing this, uh, you know, as a human, I'd be uh, still quite interested, optimistic maybe about my chances. But it's, uh, yeah, it's not really chances, uh, not when you're playing an engine. Rook c4, covering ourselves, and after queen g1, we've got bishop c5. 
nice little fork of a bishop on a7 and the queen on g1 and uh, rook b6 was played from black which actually doesn't look like a bad idea um, if we go bishop takes g1 then we've got rook takes a6 check and if we go um, uh, something like uh, bishop b6 then queen b6 and we're covering ourselves but there's this lovely little idea queen takes a7 check and after king a7 we take bishop takes g1 and um, well two bishops for the uh, rook and of course we just threaten to take on b6 next move so we'll just be a piece up the bishop on b7 and uh, well um, Stockfish didn't even hurry to uh, to take that rook after rook e8 it went bishop e3 and after f5 it went rook c5 threatening rook a5 and uh, king b8 rook takes f5 and black was completely lost so very interesting game there. Um, I thought the uh, yeah the opening uh, phase was was quite interesting there. Um, I think just a good positional decision here, very important on the fourth move, just to open up the centre and uh, and get this weak e6 square. And then uh, I think you know Ethereal played um, actually very very chess nine sixty chess, you know really trying with um, all these ideas with um, a five and um, uh, bishop d7 to f5 and uh, and a4 and knight c4 really trying to make use of um, of the positions of its pieces you know the queen that was sort of involved in the queen side here and the rook that was placed on b8 and um, you know and uh, pointing towards the opponent's king but you know the problem was was that this king here on uh, d8 and um, first of all you know all the black moves they were moving pieces on the uh, queen side pieces basically so you know there's nothing to cover the king when it castles to the uh, to the queen side the king side was blocked in not moving so the king couldn't escape to the king side and of course if you're going to play moves like b takes c5 your king's caught in the center you know it can't stay there forever um so i think you know basically it was uh, uh i mean presumably ethereal just um yeah misassessed one of these uh, resulting positions and uh, well this whole risky plan was probably a bit too much um so you know interesting in a way that you know some general chess principles also come about but um i mean of course it needed some you know some stunning play from uh, from stockfish to uh, to do it and i have to say this um, this rook sacrifice you know followed by a further piece sacrifice was uh, was quite amazing and um well you know the fact that the rook could swing over to h2 to d2 that was due to throwing in this move h4 on uh, on move uh, on move 7 and uh, you know i think uh, <coughs> amazing how you know, common and uh, and uh, normal these rooks pawn uh, thrusts have become, but uh, you just see the value of them everywhere. You know, just a, a low cost way to start an attack, and often just giving uh, you know some of your pieces extra mobility. And in chess nine sixty, that's really really important. <coughs> Pardon me. So uh, there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Why not give me a like or subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed it. Uh, just so that you're reminded next time when a new video comes along and there are plenty planned. Um, or even take a look at my new book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. Chock-a-block full of tips about how to train with engines and also some amazing engine games. And otherwise, well, hope to see you around, hopefully at the next video.